to my friends at Dyersburg Primary School. My name is Vanessa Kane. I'm the Children's Director here at MacGyver's Grant Public Library downtown. And today we are going to read the book Marvelous Maddie to go along with your Imagine It, Make It, Things We Use um, theme. Marvelous Maddie, How Margaret E. Knight Became an Inventor. This book was written by Emily Arnold McCulley. That makes her the author. She wrote the words and she also is the illustrator. So she drew all these wonderful pictures. And we're gonna look at some pictures on the front of the book before we open it. And we're gonna look at these drawings all around Marvelous Maddie. I want you to remember those drawings. I want you to think about them when we're reading this book, okay? How Maddie wrote down all her, her great ideas. And did you know that everything that we have around us has been invented by somebody? Somebody thought it up, they said, oh, I don't really like the way that works I think I can do it better and they did and that is exactly how all the wonderful things we have around us came to be you could be an inventor you might already be an inventor let's find out how Maddie got to be an inventor this book was published by Ferrer Strauss and Giro in New York marvelous Maddie let's find out about marvelous Maddie Maddie Knight lived in a little house in York, Maine with her widowed mother and her older brothers, Charlie and Jim. They were poor, but Maddie didn't feel poor. She had inherited her father's toolbox. When she thought of things that could be made with the tools, she drew them in a notebook called My Inventions. Her brothers called the sketches her brainstorms. Maddie made a whirly geek for Charlie and a jumping jack for Jim, and for her mother, who sat up late on cold nights sewing to earn a living, she made a foot warmer. And there is her father's toolbox. And there is Maddie's family using her inventions. And all along the bottom of the book are the pictures that she drew in her notebook for her inventions. You see her mama's foot warmer. In the spring, Charlie and Jim said, won't you make us a special kite? Maddie sketched a few kites with different shapes and struts. She picked the best one and set to work on it. What's Maddie doing now? Her mother asked. She's had a brainstorm, the boys said. Their mother shook her head. Maddie was a strange girl. She thought happiest with her pencil, her jackknife, and her hammer. Maddie and the boys took the finished kite to Ward's Hill and Jim ran with it into the wind. Faster, Maddie called. The kite trembled briefly, took a dive, then rose on a sudden gust. Yahoo, Charlie yelled. The kite soared higher and higher. Who made that? Some of the town boys asked. Maddie made it. She didn't. A girl couldn't make that. Well, as you probably can have already noticed by the pictures, there's the kite and there's her brothers and there's all the town kids watching on Wards Hill. What you've probably already noticed is that this time is a little bit earlier than our time, isn't it? Can you tell by the by the house they live in and the clothes they wear? Mama's wearing a long dress. She's got an apron. Maddie's wearing a dress. She, she can't wear pants yet. They've got a very simple house. There they are. You can tell the children's clothes are different in that picture, too. It's a long time ago when they didn't think girls could do stuff. Can you believe they used to didn't think girls could do stuff? Psh, they didn't know, did they, how wonderful girls are? And boys, too. The following winter, Maddie made sleds for Charlie and Jim, and they won every race down Ward's Hill. Four boys asked Maddie to make sleds for them to race. It'll cost you a quarter apiece, she said. The boys agreed, and every afternoon after school, Maddie worked on the sleds. She gave the money to her mother, but the family was still poor. There they are. Look at her sled. See how long it is? See how long the, the rails are on the bottom? And there she's making her first business transaction. There's her pretty sketches of the sled underneath. When Maddie was 11, Mrs. Knight gathered the children together and said, I've heard there are jobs in the textile mills in Manchester, New Hampshire. The boys and I will work and Maddie will go to school until she is 12. The company will rent us a house. And there they are. I'm gonna move so that they can make a little bit more money. It was very hard, very hard for women, uh, widows, to support their families back then. 
Manchester was a brand new brick town. With her family gone for 13 hours every day, Maddie was lonely. After school, while she waited for them to come home, she liked to explore the complex of mills, but the overseers chased her from the spinning and weaving rooms. There's that new town she lives in. It looks a little bit different than the inside of the house that we saw earlier, doesn't it? It's an industrial town, isn't it? And there's Maddie. Can you imagine being the only one home for 13 hours a day? One day, she heard a tremendous roar coming from a building. She went inside and saw that men were working on a huge iron machine. Maddie opened her notebook and began to sketch. Have you lost your way, little miss? A man asked. This is a machine shop, isn't it? Maddie replied. Well, what does a young girl want here? He asked. I love machines, said Maddie. I guess you must, he replied. Our shop usually repairs looms, but we've been asked to manufacture this locomotive. A locomotive is a word for a train. Maddie's eyes glowed. What is it for? Why, for the railroad. This is the General Washington. It will haul cars on the New York Central lines. The man's name was Mr. Baldwin, and he answered her questions. Maddie felt very much at home at the machine shop. She told her family what she discovered. What can this lead to, her mother said, sighing. And there's Maddie in that big machine shop. And can you see? Can you see that they have all of that big iron work that they're going to make those that big train, the big locomotive out of? You say locomotive? I like that word, locomotive. When Maddie turned 12, she went to work in the mill, rising with the 4.30 bell in the morning and trudging home to the 7.30 bell at night. One day, a shuttle shot off the end of a loom and slammed into a girl's head. The injured girl was Rebecca, who lived next door to Maddie's family. Maddie ran to help. Out of the way, the overseer shouted. Rebecca was carried out while the looms clattered on and the other girls tried not to lose their threads. Nothing ever halted production. Horrible, somebody said. It's the fault of the machine. It was a dangerous place to work, wasn't it? And there's her friend. After work, Maddie walked home with her family. She went over and over the sequence of events that had led to the accident. She pictured the shuttle, which was a, what it was supposed to do, and how it had gone wrong. A machine was an invention and could always be improved. That evening, there was a vigil for Rebecca. A weaver said it wasn't uncommon for the threads to snap, making missiles of the shuttles. Maddie sat scribbling in her notebook. Suddenly, an idea took shape. A metal guard attached to the box plate would help the shuttle that had run off the track. It was simple. If only she could try it out. And there she is, walking home. You see how worried everybody is about their friend. And there they all are at the vigil, praying for their friend. And then all on the bottom are Maddie's drawings of her idea to make that machine safer. You think she'll do it? You think it'll work? Maddie showed her notebook to Mr. Baldwin. My goodness, these are the drawings of a real inventor, he said. I think your solution is right. I'm going to take it to the boss. The head engineer was impressed and showed Maddie's idea to one of the mill owners. A few weeks passed, Rebecca got better. Then, one day, workmen arrived and began installing metal guards on all of the looms in every mill in Manchester. She made a difference, didn't she? The guards worked just as Maddie had designed them to do. Never again would someone be hurt by a runaway shuttle. Oh, Maddie, I am so proud of you, her mother said. Mr. Baldwin congratulated her. You ought to own a patent on your idea, he remarked. What's a patent? Maddie asked. He explained that inventors registered their ideas with, government, with the government to protect them from being stolen. Once patented, an idea could be sold or the inventor could manufacture the device herself. But I guess they wouldn't give a patent to a little girl, he said. What do you think will happen? Do you think she'll be able to get a patent? Let's see. Let's see what happens. Maddie worked in the mill for a few more years. Cotton prices fell and production slowed. I want to look for a better opportunity, Maddie told her mother when she turned 18. I hate to give you up, said her mother, but I know you must go. Maddie moved away from home and worked in several different factories. Then, after the Civil War, she heard of a job in Springfield, Massachusetts. 
It was in a factory that mass-produced paper bags that, that used to be made by hand. Its machines cut paper from long rolls, then folded and pasted each length shut at the bottom like an envelope, but the bags didn't stand upright, and grocers had to use one hand to hold them open for filling, and bulky items tended to split the bags. So it looks like, hmm, there's an idea of something that doesn't quite work the way they need it to. It won't stay up for the grocers. It's not strong enough to hold bulky items. In Springfield, Maddie shared a room with Sadie, who worked in the shoe factory. Maddie had been, not, oh, excuse me, I got tongue-tied, didn't I? Maddie had not been working at the bag factory for very long when a man mentioned that he knew someone who was trying to invent a better machine that could cut and glue a square-bottomed bag. Such a machine would make a far better product. Soon Maddie heard about others who were trying to invent an improved machine. Hmm. Maddie decided she must try to invent one herself. She sat up at a workshop. She set up a workshop in the basement of her rooming house and sketched possible improvements on the bag machine. Sadie came downstairs to see what Maddie was up to. It's bedtime, she said. Whatever are you doing? Maddie made a notation in her notebook before she answered. Inventing, she said. Well, you're not like any of the girls I've ever, ever knew, said Sadie. Maddie explained what she was working on and Sadie took to checking up on her new friend. How's it coming along? We'll see, Maddie would say. There's her little workshop down in the basement of the rooming house. And there's her friend Sadie checking on her, see her around the corner. And there's all those wonderful sketches in her notebook. What do you see at the bottom? What is she making? I see, I see some machinery. I see maybe the way that they, she wants that bag to be folded. Let's see what happens. Maddie worked and worked on her bag making machine. She made, a paper, she made paper cut out versions of her machine, refining the process by trial and error. There was no end to improving, it seemed. But the day came to try to make some paper bags. She built a prototype machine out of wood using her father's old toolbox. Would it work? When the first bag rolled out, the paper caught. Maggie found the problem and fixed it. Gingerly, she started the machine again. The roll proceeded smoothly after one after another paper bags poured from her invention. So do you see when she had a little problem? She figured out what it was and she fixed it. And that is a lot of what engineering and inventing is today. They still do that. They try to do something, they check it out. They go, ooh, that didn't quite work the way I wanted to, let's fix that. Before we even get started, they'll, they'll fix it. Isn't that awesome? Over the next few weeks, she made herself several thousand bags each of them with a flat bottom, enabling it to stand upright and hold bulky groceries without ripping. You've done it, Sadie cried. I have, Maddie, Maddie agreed. Look at all those paper bags. An inventors club formed in Springfield. Maddie went to a meeting and introduced herself. She told the men she'd invented a new machine and wanted to obtain a patent. There's an excellent machine shop in Boston, one of the inventors told her. Have them make an iron prototype to file with the patent office. When Maddie told Sadie, she said, you're going to Boston all by yourself? I have to, Maddie replied. There she is at her inventor's club. Sometimes that's a scary thing to do, to go join a club. Even though you know that you're gonna meet people who love what you love, it's kind of scary to step right in and say, you know what, I'm an inventor too. And especially back then, because women were not really taken seriously back then. Women, they didn't, do you remember the boys said, she couldn't have built that kite. She's a girl. Because back then, women didn't have the same rights as men. And women didn't, um, nobody thought that women could really think with their mind. They thought they just could care for people and stuff. They didn't think, they didn't know how smart women are. She used some of her savings to rent a room in Boston so that she could supervise the casting and assembly of her machine. I think you've got a money idea here, the shop foreman said, but why doesn't your husband come in and see to this himself? I am the inventor, Maddie said, and you need to recast this part. It doesn't exactly meet my specifications. One day when she arrived at the shop, a man pushed past her and stormed out the door. At the time, she thought that only that he was rude. The prototype took a few weeks longer to complete. 
It was a moment of triumph when she loaded a roll of paper and proved that her machine produced uniform square bottom bags. With the help of a friendly machinist, she carried her invention to the patent office and filled out the paperwork. The clerk read it and handed it back to her. Miss, this has already been patented only last week. Maddie gazed in bewilderment at the record. Indeed, one Charles F. Annan had submitted a prototype and filed a patent for an identical invention. That's the fellow who was in our shop, said the machinist. He's stolen your idea. Maddie had never felt so discouraged. The clerk said, this looks like a matter for the court. The court? Maddie asked. You can, if you can prove to the judge that this idea is yours, you will get the patent, he said. Do you think the court will believe that a woman thought of that idea? Let's see. Maddie had to hire a lawyer. It took the rest of her savings. Do you have a notebook, he asked. Maddie said that she had. The lawyer told her to bring Sadie to testify. Maddie had to go to Springfield and persuade Sadie to, become, to come to Boston. Mr. Annan took the stage. He told the judge that the invention was obviously his because Miss Knight could not possibly understand the mechanics of this machine. When Sadie took the stand, she was so frightened, she spoke in a whisper, this woman is even less competent than Miss Knight, snorted Charles Annan. Maddie's lawyer asked Sadie if she ever saw Maddie work on her invention. Oh yes, whispered Sadie. When, asked the lawyer. Every night for two years, Sadie told him. Then Maddie's lawyer asked her to show the court her drawings, her paper patterns, and the notebook with all of its entries. The judge poured over them. I must compliment you on the entire originality of this machine, he said finally. This and evidence and the testimony of the witness prove Miss Knight's pri priority of the invention. Mr. Annan will forever be disgraced in history. Maddie beamed and Sadie gave a little cheer. And there is Maddie and the judge. And there's her notes at the bottom. She improved the bag machine and applied for another patent. Then she set up the Eastern Paper Bag Company with a business partner. Maddie was a professional inventor for the rest of her life, and when she died at the age of 76, her obituary referred to her as the Lady Edison. Edison was a very famous inventor. People still use paper bags from Maddie's invention every day. I'm gonna show you a paper bag. Just like your lunch bag, just like the bags used for crafts when you go to the crafts. Square bottom, stands up by itself. This is a smaller version, isn't it? This is maybe what we would use for a, a large lunch or for a craft at the craft center. You've seen the big bags that they use sometimes at the grocery store. Maddie invented that and nobody thought she could because she was a girl. So I inspire you, I um, encourage you is what I mean to say. I encourage you to think of something that you can invent. Have a wonderful day.